You will be aware that the Care Quality Commission will be inspecting the services we provide in the week beginning the 2nd of February. The visit will be different to previous CEQ inspections. Under the new regime, we will be visited by a team of around 60 inspectors who will be out and about across the organisation, observing the care that we provide to patients, looking at our records and talking to you, our frontline staff. Ultimately, this inspection is an assessment of the services we provide, but it is also an opportunity for learning where we're doing well and where we need to improve. And it also gives us a chance to share good practice and innovation. The CQC inspection visit begins with a presentation by the executive team to the CQC inspectors. This is the presentation we'd like to share with you now. It's been shared with staff groups at meetings and focus groups over the last two to three weeks. We're grateful for the feedback that we've received, which has allowed us to develop and improve the presentation ahead of the CQC visit. After you've viewed this presentation, we'd be delighted to receive your feedback too, and details are available on the final slide. The early slides in this presentation are about our services. How many patients we see every year in different environments, in hospital and community. We also want to share with them a little bit of our history and context about when we became a Foundation Trust and changes in the Trust since then, including becoming an integrated care provider in 2011. We will share with the CQC our ambition for services which are right first time, every time for patients so that seen by the right clinician, in the right place, whether hospital or community, at the right time, first time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We will share our delivery strategies, quality matters, which is our strategy for providing a quality service, and staff matter, our organisation development strategy. Both of these are available on our intranet. We will share our strategic principles for core acute specialties to be provided across both of our current acute sites and for care close to home where that's safe, effective and efficient, with the older person always at the heart of service delivery. We will share our four touchstones, the four bests, and our mission with you all the way, which expresses our commitment to put patients at the centre of everything we do in providing an integrated care service. We will share with the CQC our quality goals, which are part of our refreshed quality strategy called Quality Matters. The national definition for quality is in three domains, safety, effectiveness and patient experience. And we have laid out priorities in each of those areas. We will also be sharing our new organisation development strategy, Staff Matters, which lays out our plans for organisational change, organisational culture and employee engagement. As a trust, we have adopted the values outlined in the NHS Constitution. To support this, staff have also helped us develop a behaviours framework, a copy of which was attached to your January payslip. The CQC will inspect our services against five domains. Safe, effective, caring, responsive and well-led. Trusts now are asked to carry out a self-assessment ahead of the CQC inspection. We did this with the help of staff through a series of peer reviews carried out last autumn. And we have assessed our services as you can see in the slide. Where we say services require improvement, this means that we have more work to do to make sure that we get it right for each patient every time. For each of the five domains, we will show on one slide our strengths and areas for improvement. In the case of our safety outcomes, C. diff, pressure ulcers and VTE, for example, our outcomes are good and we know from the coroner that our investigations and learning processes can also be good. 
However, we have zero tolerance for harm, and until we have tackled barriers to sustain learning and improvement from incidents and never events, have the quality of staffing we are seeking in all areas, and repeatable, consistent compliance in areas such as falls, we have assessed ourselves as requiring improvement. Staffing. We have implemented the recommendations of the National Quality Board and nursing staffing is reported to the board every month. We have maintained staff in line with current establishments, but there remain some staffing pressures filled by agency staff. In addition, there are several areas where the Trust is making use of locum medical staff while seeking to find permanent staffing solutions. We do well in nurse recruitment, taking the lion's share of those available from Teesside University and increasing our numbers over time. However, we have some challenges around specialist nursing areas and the benefits are lessened by staff turnover. We're therefore focusing efforts on developing workforce plans by service and understanding and planning for retention. In December, the Board approved the establishment of a large-scale staff bank from which the significant majority of additional staffing needs can be met, and we are now recruiting the resource needed to put in place and manage this. We are also actively looking at skill mix on wards and in teams, including creating new roles where traditional medical or nursing staffing is hard to find. Over the past few years, we have significantly improved our performance on infection control, as you can see from the graph. This has been as a result of concerted, multidisciplinary effort focusing on compliance with key procedures like hand hygiene and bare below the elbows, improving antibiotic prescribing compliance, and caring for staff in a safe, clean environment. An area that the CQC will be particularly interested in will be our record keeping, especially as they gave us an improvement action at UHND last time they inspected. Since then, we've overhauled our nursing documentation and ward monitoring framework, whilst maintaining a focus on record keeping through the senior nurses group and our care groups. We have carried out audits at many levels and peer reviews. Notes on observations and DNA CPRs are now much improved but peer reviews have identified a need for some further emphasis on care planning to ensure consistent quality. We've reflected and learned at every stage and we're currently reviewing the new nursing documentation in response to feedback. We will also be sharing with them the new e-observation system which is now in pilot phase for which we've received very favourable feedback from wards. This helps ensure observations are recorded and escalated and supports care planning and handover. Under the effective domain, the Trust has assessed itself as good because of our clinical outcomes, but we know that we can improve in the areas highlighted. We will want to highlight the work we've been carrying out to improve mortality and clinical outcomes, particularly the Mortality Reduction Committee and the Weekly Mortality Review Group, which allows for near real-time learning and reflection. We've seen continuous improvement in HSMR, RAMI, SHIMI, and the variance between UHND and DMH is closing. There's a high participation now in clinical audit, but we can do more to learn and improve. Hence the new Medical Directors Learning Forum, there are still some challenges with data completeness around stroke and PROMS, but we have no outliers for national surgeon-specific outcomes. We will be sharing with the CQC information about our care plans and pathways, and we will be using fractured neck of femur as an example of where we have begun to make improvements. We are learning and improving pathways all the time, particularly around fractured neck of femur and around sepsis and falls, and we now understand medication issues that contribute to falls and have plans to tackle them. The expansion of deprivation of liberty safeguards following the Cheshire West ruling has increased workload, along with the need for awareness and understanding amongst our teams. While we've enhanced our training programmes 
and have dedicated support within our Safeguarding Adults team, we know that there is more to do to promote consistent levels of awareness and understanding on the wards and among teens. Under the caring domain, the Trust has assessed itself as good. This evaluation is based on feedback from previous inspections and audits, for example on our Dignity Champions, and more importantly on the outcomes of our own peer reviews across sites and patient feedback through friends and family tests and other forms. However, we do not get it right first time every time and we continue to strive for this. Under friends and family, we will want to explain to the CQC our improvement in performance, particularly since the change of approach nationally to how friends and family test is reported. We will also share with the CQC the work we do to collect patient views. Over 70,000 patient contacts a year are used to assess the quality of our care and where we can improve. We will share the outcomes of national surveys such as the maternity survey where we did particularly well last year and A&E where we are in the middle of the pack. Inpatient surveys show improvement over time but there has been some recent slippage. Overall, feedback sources point to a positive or neutral performance, and we proactively seek learning at ward, team and trust level where feedback indicates that we could do better. Under the responsive domain, we believe that we require improvement. Our outcomes in terms of performance are relatively good and we are meeting referral to treatment targets and until recently we're meeting A&E targets overall. We have a strong health improvement team working in the community and through contacts with our patients in our acute hospitals, helping patients live healthier lifestyles and helping them with their rehabilitation. Monitor has complemented the depth of our service planning processes, however, we do have challenges in providing a consistently high quality experience in our A&E departments due to high demand and capacity pressures and these then impact on patient flow, discharge and transfer which in turn create pressures on elective services. We will talk about accident and emergency and the demand pressures facing the service particularly at UHND. We will talk about the work that we did to reconfigure services last autumn and the introduction of the assess to admit model. We will also talk about our plans to expand the footprint of A&E at Darlington in order to co-locate the urgent care service and our plan to remodel the A&E department and the whole of front of house at UHND. We will talk about the pressures that we face with discharge and transfer of patients and the impact that this has on patient flow. We will outline the work we are doing to improve use of community hospitals and services and the development of capacity for elective services at alternative sites, in particular at Bishop Auckland. We will outline the work that we have done with dementia charities to improve outpatients at Darlington and that we have recruited a lead nurse for dementia to take forward awareness, training and a strategic approach trust-wide. Under the well-led domain, we have assessed the trust as requiring improvement. We have a wide range of staff recognition measures in place, such as staff benefits and the annual awards scheme. Monitor have commended our business planning for taking an evidenced and balanced view of services including quality and interaction with workforce. We have been praised by the Foundation Trust Network for the way in which we proactively involve our governors in key decisions and scrutiny. So there are areas where we are doing well, but there are other areas where we need to improve. Our new organisation development strategy, Staff Matter, is about how we deliver some of these improvements, including how we embed our vision and values in the organisational culture. We will be sharing with the CQC some of the work we've been doing on staff engagement, including the recent Dragon's Den, where staff were able to bid for their share of £30,000 to bring small improvement ideas to life. But there are areas where we need to improve, such as our approach to the admin review. 
Towards the end of our presentation, we will share with the CQC some of the risks that the organisation faces and the steps we have in place to mitigate those risks. We will end our presentation by welcoming the CQ inspectors to the Trust. Ultimately, this inspection is an assessment of the services we all provide for our patients, but it's also an opportunity for learning where we are doing well and where we need to improve. It also gives us a chance to share good practice and innovation. Over the last few weeks, we've been sharing drafts of this presentation with various staff groups across the organisation to get their views on whether it fairly reflects the organisation and how we are doing. We've put this presentation online so that you too can comment on what we plan to say to the CQC during the inspection next week. As part of the inspection, the CQC team would like to give staff the opportunity to give their views on our organisation and the services we deliver. A series of focus groups will be held between the 3rd and the 5th of February for different staff groups to ensure that all staff have the chance to give their views in an open and honest environment. The dates and times of those focus groups are available on StaffNet. Please send your comments to arc at cddft.nhs.uk Thank you.